Going carnivore in Thailand, baby. I'm out here in the pool. Just got done doing a little exercise. Thought I'd tell you what we ate. Typical bacon and eggs for breakfast around one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. And at night, surprise, ribeye. <laughs> Big surprise. Hey, when you're buying ribeye at $5.93 per pound for grass-fed, locally raised ribeyes that are two inches thick, some of the ribeyes came in over two pounds. I am going to cut those in half and make two meals out of them. Just cut them down the middle uh, because, when, you know, depending on how much fat's on them, if there's a lot of fat, then there might not be two pounds of ribeye. It might actually be a pound and a quarter of ribeye. And, and then maybe I eat the whole thing. But otherwise, it might make two meals. But I'm paying for a average steak, and the average steak I think was one pound thirteen ounces was the average size of the the steak, and I'm paying ten dollars and some small change U.S. per steak delivered to your door, and it's locally raised on on beef, uh, and. Ooh, last night that steak was delicious. So tender, it melted in your mouth. I mean, I lowered the temperature from 58.3 Celsius down to 58 for eight hours in the sous vide. Now, you might not think 0.3 degrees Celsius is that much, but remember, it's 2.2 degrees of Fahrenheit for each degree of Celsius. So 0.3 is really like half a degree. Half a degree or 0.3 degrees Celsius is really like half a degree Fahrenheit. And that temperature difference on the inside of the steak makes it a little bit more redder than brown. So it's, it's a little more pink, a little bit closer to rare than the medium. And it really made a difference in the eight hours that we're sous vide it. And then after we sous vide it for eight hours, we put it in the refrigerator and let it sit maybe a day. Maybe we cooked it, you know, the day before. And then the next day we take it out, we season it real good, get that skillet good and hot with butter in it and just dump that steak on top of it and sear it on all sides after cutting the fat off. No one's eating the fat, but hey, it's fantastic. So, you know, at that price, I got, I had 14 kilograms, which is like 29 pounds of steak delivered to my door, ribeyes for $174 or something, right? I mean, wow. Do that in the United States. People ask why I come, why did you choose Thailand, you know, when you left the United States? <laughs> That's one good reason right there. Plus it's got the best, if you're an omnivore or if you're an herbivore, Thailand might have the best food in the world. If you're a carnivore by wiring, by genetic design, which I believe I am now, if you're a carnivore, it's sort of a waste because they've got such good food that all it is is serious temptation because you've had a lifetime of loving good food. And what you got now, you got to walk by it and say, I need to find a place I can get some meat. But there's plenty of vendors on the street who cook grilled chicken, grilled pork, 
You don't find a lot of grilled steaks out there, but you can find grilled chicken, grilled pork, grilled duck. You can find all that stuff. Uh, and, you know, in the States, we used to get pork rinds in a bag, processed pork rinds. Well, here they take real pork neck and they fry that stuff up and make essentially fresh pork rinds. And you can buy them on the street everywhere. And they're freaking delicious. And it's meat and fat and it's a good snack. And for snacks, I also have my chicken tenderloins which twice now we have messed up and cooked terrible. Getting to know this oven and the times involved has been an issue. And twice we've cooked up a batch of tenderloins. I know how they're supposed to taste and these aren't it. So I'll do better next time. That's all, folks.